Point math 31, to round out this section, let's take a look at absolute value models for distance. And I wanna practice going from a statement, like a sentence written with words, into some math symbols. I think we tend to struggle with going from words to symbols, so I wanna practice that, and we're gonna practice it um, using absolute value models. So if A and B represent two real numbers, then the absolute value of their difference and you can write the difference in either direction, a minus b or b minus a, but either way they have an absolute value um, grouping symbol around them. That represents the distance between them. And let me give you a four example. Let's talk about three and seven. I think you'll give me that these two numbers are four units apart, right? If I was gonna draw the number line, we have three and then four units later, we hit the number seven. Well, think about the absolute value of their difference. What if I did the absolute value of three minus seven, or I happen to, to do it the other way, the absolute value of seven minus three? Either way, I get four, right? Because these two numbers are four units apart. So if I wanna talk about the distance between two numbers, I'm gonna go ahead, subtract them, and then take the absolute value. All right, so we're gonna write each statement using an absolute value inequality. When you hear inequality, it means you get to choose between the symbol less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to. Those are your four options for an inequality, right? Versus an equality, you just get the equal sign. All right, so M is no more than nine units from three. So let me give you a visual. If I was gonna make the number line, uh, let me find my trusty ruler, found it. If I was going to make the number line, and I'm not asking us to solve this, I just wanna give us a graph idea. If I was no more than nine units from three, right, I could go in either direction. All right, so I'm looking for numbers that are no more than nine units either way. Right, nine units from three. So I could be any of these numbers in here up to whatever this upper bound is, any of these numbers in here down to that lower bound. But I think you hear that nine nine units, that's the distance, right? That's what the absolute value will be set either less than, less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. And the two numbers that are battling this out are M and three. These are the two numbers that wanna be no more than nine units away from each other. So I'm gonna take the absolute value of M minus three, and in terms of no more than nine, that means that they should be less than or equal to nine. Right, so any numbers that are in this band, right, and, and we could actually figure this out. This is negative six to 12, right? Any of these numbers could be M. Any number in here, its distance between that number and three is no more than nine, right? Now you could also write this the other way. I just think it's a little less intuitive to say three minus M is less than or equal to nine. Okay, so let me move this up so we can keep on practicing these. All right, so I have here T is within 0.02 units of 5.8. So here's my distance, right? They're telling me don't be too far away from point, or excuse me, 5.8. All right, so my distance, and it's the distance between T and 5.8. So I need the absolute value of T minus 5.8. If I'm within 0.02 units, it means that distance should be less than or equal to 0.02. Now again, I feel like it's less intuitive or maybe you're like, well, this wasn't intuitive to begin with, so cool. But you could have, if you wanted to, you could have done this the other way. You could have said 5.8 minus T has to be less than or equal to 0.02. I, I just feel like I'm used to writing them that way. Okay, this says Z is no less than five units from four. So that's a little different no less, all right, that's in, in contrast to part A, which said no more. But again, here's my distance, all right, and the two numbers that are duking it out this time are Z and four. So I'm gonna be looking at the absolute value of Z minus four. Now to be no less than five means you need to be greater than five units apart. I need that distance to be at least five, right? No less than five. So if we're not less than five, I guess technically we should be greater than or equal to five. Okay, so let's practice these last two 
see if we can get them written up as absolute value um, inequality. So k is within some distance of 10, so we will have the absolute value of k minus 10 has to be less than or equal to 0 0.0002. And then we have q is no more than eight units from 22, so it looks like q and 22 and they want to be less than or equal to eight units away. All right, Ooh, can you see that last one? That might have just been out of view. Let me move that up just slightly so we can see it. Okay, so with that, that, that ends for us chapter two and section 2.7. So just to keep in mind, in section 2.7, we talked about how to solve linear inequalities, right? Whether they were two-part inequalities or three-part inequalities, keeping in mind that whole, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to change the direction of the inequality. Then we talked about absolute value inequalities, right? We had the equal sign we called case one. We had less than, case two, greater than, case three. All right, and again, this all rounds out chapter two. So a bunch of review, right? Linear equations, quadratic equations, radicals, radical equations, equations with rational exponents, imaginary numbers, all sorts of stuff is in chapter two that we got to review up um, and make sure we're, we're solid with that material before we move on to the advanced stuff. All right, thanks so much, gang. I will see you in chapter three. Bye.